Welcome back. So uh, the first half we discussed uh, what is data science and some of these applications of data science and how are they related to our day to day life in the activities and processes that you know, we normally get involved. This section we will discuss more about the clarity saying that how is uh, data science related to big data, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, analytics as well as something called as you know deep learning these days right uh, there's a lot of confusion in minds of young aspirants as well who are just about graduates or postgraduates and want to you know sign up for this career because uh, you know we get to see you know a lot of these things uh, you know uh, coming up so let us you know try to take a deep dive into the subject understand uh, you know their boundaries and their overlaps and then uh, in the other section, uh, you know, we will discuss about uh, specifics about you know, careers. So, as I said, that you know, data science uh, has majorly three components. One is statistics, the other one is econometrics, uh, and the third thing is you know, some bit of mathematics. Right? Now, this is a vast subject. You know, it's a vast domain, as you can understand. That you know, this can be applied to any business, any process, including that of government infrastructure and the, the social side of it, right? Uh, and when I say social side of it, it actually can help us in even disaster management, right? Uh, let me, you know, before uh, taking a deep dive, let me again take an example. Uh, when recently the earthquake happened in Nepal, uh, uh, you know. There was a tie-up between uh, uh, a Nepalese uh, 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 mobile uh, provider, uh, just like we have Vodafone and Airtel out here in India, uh, and an NGO. And all they could do, uh, you know, they actually uh, had to do rather, is basically try to trace the cell phone signals concentration onto the map of Nepal. So as and when the earthquake was happening, it did actually last for almost more than 12 hours, you know, you know stretching to 24 hours, because the tremors started happening uh, you know, every half an hour, uh, and then you know six hours, and then 12 hours, right? There were a couple of tremors that happened over a 24 hours uh, in the time lag, and uh, you know when the relief. Uh, you know, started happening. They were like, you know, lost saying that, okay, where do we go? How do we plan it? You know, where do we focus more? How do I plan my, uh, you know, uh, logistics? So they actually tied up with the cell phone company and tried to, you know, trace the signals and their current locations, you know, through satellites. Because, you know, for cell phone signals, you know, you have live things saying that where is the, the density of the people? So when things happen, people start fleeing, they start running, correct? Right? And then when everything is damaged, you need to figure out that where is the maximum density of people from where you can, you know, start, you know, uh, dropping the foods and the, you know, sending the first aid guides and all that. So all they did was, you know, tied up with this company, mapped onto the, the demographic of, uh, you know, the map of Nepal, saying that, okay, where is maximum concentration of human beings, right? And that's where, how the helicopters were actually sent. Uh, food uh, packages, including first aid. Right? So that's a you know a very critical uh, uh, you know easy method of applying data and understanding how to you know get the human relief. The other thing was also saying that how much was the damage? Uh, look at any given point in time, one minute before the earthquake, there were X number of SIM cards which were actually uh, active. When I say Active, I mean to say not you know sending signals, but then they were active. That means you know either someone was te texting something, people were sending messages or calling, or you know they were sending WhatsApp and all that. And we all know when a disaster happens, everyone tries to connect to their near and dear ones. So if I have X number of active SIM cards one minute before the earthquake uh, hit us. And then if I actually get to see that out of those X active SIM cards, after 12 hours of time, it's X by two 
or X by 3, which are active and has never been uh, operated, used in the last 12 hours, it's a bad news for us. Because if a disaster of this uh, magnitude hit us, and I have not been able to use my cell for any purpose, whether it's a call, whether it's a text message, whether it's searching something on the net, or whether it's you know sending a WhatsApp or something, uh, you know, there is a high likelihood that I'm not active anymore as a human being, right? And that's an immediate, uh, you know, guesstimate of the damage, uh, you know, that the earthquake may have actually inflicted, right? Now, having given this example, is a very grim example, I understand that, but then that's also one of the use. Uh, we mean to say that, you know, there's a vast application of data science. It can be used by a Boeing, by airlines, by a superstore like, you know, Spencer's, by a bank, uh, you know, by Amazon, everyone. So there are a lot of aspects to handle. So one is data. Obviously, if you do not have data, you can't do anything. You can't analyze data. So how do I handle data? Now, in the last 10 years of time, as I said in the beginning, that, you know, data has become 10 times, 100 times, right? And interestingly, data is no more the way that we understand data. So all this time we were taught C++, Java, some bit of well, SQL queries, uh, structured database, but then data is now in terms of voice, in terms of image, in terms of live streaming, in terms of uh, you know uh, anything, right? So the formats of the data have changed. And you know, to have a platform to store any of these kind of data types, uh, you know, is something which is uh, the genesis of the big data platform. Okay. Uh, interestingly, uh, Yahoo uh, is uh, you know one of the main contributors to this platform. Uh, way back in 2007, eight, and nine, uh, you know, Yahoo started uh, experimenting. Uh, you know, with a platform called as Hadoop, wherein they said that, you know, can I store uh, huge amounts of data? And obviously, you know, all others contributed as well. Uh, uh, this Hadoop flat file system, HDFS, uh, was the genesis of the first platform, first version of big data. And it was able to capture data in all kinds of format. And, uh, you know, we have essentially something called as four capital V's, right? Uh, when I say four V's, I mean to say it's velocity. That means, you know, uh, data can come uh, with a speed. Uh, it is uh, in a live streaming format as well. So velocity, variety, the second V, that means any kind of data. It can be voice, image, uh, you know, it can be uh, uh, in a molecular structure, it can be structured database, so any, any variety. And then we had something called as, uh, you know, volume. That means the, the size of the data. Uh, you know, the size of the data has grown huge. I mean, you know, uh, in 2000, uh, in even 98, 2000, when we had a 4 GB RAM, uh, you know, we never had a 4 GB RAM. I mean, we had 512 MB RAMs and all that. And the hard disk is to have a capacity of 4 GB RAM, 2 GB RAM. And now, you know, that was in, in, in 2000, right? And now we are in 2017 and we are saying that, come on, you know, I'll have a 16 GB RAM, uh, you know, in a, in a laptop, forget about a desktop. So the capacity has grown huge. Uh, the data generation has also become, uh, you know, very high. Uh, and hence you have to handle volumes of data, right? Uh, there are, uh, you know, stock markets which will handle uh, 100 GBs of data in a nanosecond. And you have to take the data, store it, analyze it, and send back the results as well. So, you know, volume is the third V. And uh, the fourth V is called as veracity. And the veracity uh, signifies that, uh, you know, the relevance of the data is also a challenge. Because when you handle social media, and you want to understand a sentiment of a particular brand. So, you know, suppose a brand will like to, uh, uh, you know, take up for an advertisement, uh, you know, one of the cricket players, right? So who will endorse this brand? 
So now between X and Y, between, uh, uh, you know, X, Y, Z, uh, as, you know, popular cricket players, the agency which is actually working for a big brand will actually do a sentiment analysis on the web, on Twitter, on Facebook, on social media, saying that who is actually having the highest positive sentiment, right? Whether it's Mahindra Singh Dhoni, whether it's Virat Kohli, whether it's someone else, and then, you know, their rates are actually fixed like that. So you just can't be arbitrary in saying that, look, I'm going to take, you know, 2x of the money than the other person uh, on your will. Right? Your sweet, you know, will will not work out because they'll do a sentiment analysis saying that, look, if you're at par, you can at, at the most charge at par because it's competitive there as well, unfortunately. And they'll say that if you charge me 2x, I'm not going to give you that 2x because your popularity is same as that of the other person. I better go to the other person, right? So everything is based on data, uh, but the relevance. So when you actually, you know, take data out of the social media things, we all understand that, you know, 90%, 80% are actually junk because people will have their comments, people will, you know, digress from the topic, people will say a lot of other things, and then only 10% or 5% can be relevant. That's a challenge, uh, you know, for social media data because uh, it's a free text. Everyone can come, you know, comment. And uh, there's a special way to handle that, and that's why the four V also come into picture, which is called as veracity. So these are the four Vs: volume, variety, uh, velocity, and veracity. Uh, you know, which is taken care of uh, by the big data platform. Uh, it's basically a platform which can store unstructured data. Uh, and what I mean to say, unstructured data is basically, uh, you know, data which is like, as I said, you know. Uh, you know, tweet data. Tweet data will not have a primary key, foreign key, uh, you know, different kind of columns, different kind of tables. They are not joined with each other. So these are unstructured data. Right? Uh, so that's how, uh, you know, uh, Big Data Platform came in. Now, within Big Data Platform also, there are uh, updates that's happening since the last three, four years of time. Uh, there's something called a Spark now, which has come up. So Spark is basically an advanced platform, uh, which is more distributed in nature. You can do parallel computing uh, on Spark. So this is uh, a big data platform. So what it does, it actually helps us to store the data in the new format, which can be accessed, analyzed, and computed uh, at a far more uh, you know, uh, speed, as well as accuracy. Correct? So that's the big data platform. Now, Will big data platform churn out predictive analytics? Yes, but they're not within from within itself. So once you have the technology to capture, uh, you know, store uh, the data, then you need to mine the data and then analyze the data. Now to analyze the data, you actually need these kind of models, right? Uh, statistics to begin with, obviously. You can do a very simple, you know, statistics saying that uh, you know, uh, you know something like a mean, mode, median, which is coming to be most frequent. That's a mode. Uh, you know, which is having the, you know, the average number. Like, you know, say for example, everyone is buying from Flipkart uh, or Amazon, and you just want to know, saying that okay, uh, during the the mega festival or the mega offer that lasted for four days, what was the average buying price? So that's an average mean, right? Or you can say what is the median and all that, right? So if you do not take into account extreme wise like you know uh, you know goods which are very costly in nature so you know i can be a very uh, rich guy and i can order a camera which is like you know two lakhs but then you know that's 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 an extreme value right uh, i'm I maybe an outlier so you know need to avoid that you you know take something like a median right which is a midpoint right it avoids extreme values so you can start with these basics and then as i said that if you want to actually get into some bit of modeling saying that okay uh, is there any kind of correlation between age and the frequency of buying? So maybe, uh, you know, we you know, stratify the data and see that uh, age groups between 23 to, uh, you know, maybe 28, you know, are actually uh, having the maximum frequency of, uh, you know, purchases uh, in a 48 hour time slot, right? But then, you know, when you move on from 28 years of age to uh, you know, 38 years of age, the frequency drops, uh, you know, drastically. And then if you move beyond 38 years of age, uh, you know, the frequency is further low. 
On the other hand, you may figure out that a guy who is actually, so his frequency, that is number of purchases may be high, you know, he's frequently logging in and buying. But on the other hand, you may get to see that a guy who is actually from 28 years to 38 years is actually buying uh, more in terms of money. That means, you know, because of his, uh, you know, salary, because of his position, uh, so he is buying, uh, you know, more work. So his back value, uh, his, uh, you know, card value is actually more. So there can be different kinds of analysis that can be done, and you can correlate that with age, uh, as an example. So you can do it with regression. You can, you know, do with in other other things as well. But then, this is again, uh, you know, just about okay. I mean, in terms of analytics, right? Uh, you want to further go into the fact that you want to suggest, uh, you know, what kind of things you should buy or if you, if someone is a prime member in Amazon, uh, you want to get suggestions of what kind of movie you would like to, to see. That uses very high end of algorithm called as uh, unsupervised machine learning. 